Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Chevy Silverado ZR2 with the Bison package. Before we get into this video, though, as always, if you're going to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Powering the ZR2 is a naturally aspirated 6.2 liter V8 that goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 14 around town and then 17 on the highway with power outputs being 420 horsepower and then 460 pound feet of torque. And big news for the 2024 model year, you'll also be able to get the Duramax diesel that has 305 horsepower and then 495 pound feet of torque. Now, before we go over the front end, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood, you can see it's actually blacked out there in the center and you got the 6.2L badge to add to the effect, but I think it's a cool look. We've got the Silverado's new daytime running lights with the upgraded headlights. And then you guys can see you've got a little like daytime running light there in the grill. And then notice with the flow type, you've got the red accenting ZR2 badge off to the side. And then we've got this new bumper from AEV. So you've got a fog light integrated, you've got recovery points. And you guys can see here with the protection underneath, you do get some added uh, skid plate protection with this package. But I mean, this thing is hardcore. I mean, that thing can take a hit. And when you put it all together, I really do like the new look of the ZR2 with this bumper. Now, popping around the side here, we've got 33s wrapped around 18 inch wheels in the front and over in the rear. Uh, so the tires haven't changed for this Bison package, but we do have new wheels that are a part of this Bison package. And just like all other ZR2s, it is lifted a couple of inches and you have Multimatic shocks. So I'll show you a better view from the rear. We've got these cool fender flares here, ZR2 there on the side, and then you guys can see the blacked out mirror cap, and then notice we got the protection here on the side. And then there's kind of a better view of the Multimatic shocks. We do have leaf springs here in the rear as well. Here is your full side view with the ZR2 bikes, and it has a nice leveled appearance because of the lift, and it just looks like a tank. So here's a key fob for the Bison. You guys can see we've got our unlock function, our lock function, remote start, and then the drop down for the tailgate as well as the Chevy logo. Now when it comes to the bed of this particular truck, you guys can see we have a tonneau cover, which is actually really nice. And then we've got some LED bed light action. We also have a full power outlet, and then we've got protection from the factory as well. This one also has the multi-flex tailgate, which is the like whole step system right here. So that's a pretty cool thing. And by the way, putting this uh, back is really easy. You can do it with one hand. So you just kind of pinch that in and then just lift from the bottom and all the way up and boom. Now I've got the new style of taillights, of course, Bison logo there on the back, and then AEV here on the back. And then notice how it's matte black there on the top of the multi-flex. And then we've got pretty aggressive recovery points here with this upgraded bumper, just as sturdy as the one up front. And then you still have the exhaust tips, which kind of are a little bit more hidden to help out with departure. And putting it all together, let me know what you guys think about the looks on this Bison package. Now popping inside, I really like the interior. So this is meant to be easy to clean and you've got some cool like neon accenting as well. And so altogether it looks pretty cool. And that theme continues onto the seats here. You've got behind the seat storage and notice how the perforations are extra small. That's also supposed to help out with cleaning and all of that. Well, tow room back here is really good. And then you guys can see you got a storage pocket. We've got some cup holder action. We've got heated seats back here, some USBs as well. And then we have little cup holder armrest. And then last but not least, headroom, it's good. And now taking a look at the front door panel, you guys can see again with the material use, easy to clean. I like that strip that goes across and then the neon stitching. All for window controls, front two are automatic. You get your mirror adjustments, the mirrors do power fold in. And then we've got memory seat functionality and then blind spot monitoring with the mirrors. Now here's a payload sticker. We have 1,010 pounds of payload capacity and then towing capacity is 8,800 pounds with this truck. And then here is the front seat, got AEV there in the headrest. And you guys can see again, perforated all down the center, extra small perforations. Power adjustments there on the side of the seat. We've got our drive mode select here with our tow haul mode select, drive line select. So we have four wheel auto, four wheel high, two wheel high, four wheel low, and then your heads up display controls and then your light controls right next to that. And then the steering wheel is power adjustable. Now taking a look at the steering wheel, we've got nice padding all around. Rated controls on the back with our paddle shifters for the 10 speed automatic. Controls here for the center stack. We also have our cruise control here with our heated steering wheel button on the steering wheel. And then your regular turn signal windshield wiper stock in the back. 
So we've got this full digital gauge cluster here with the ZR2 that'll basically show you different bits of info on the truck or systems within the truck. And then when it comes to off-road modes, we have an off-road mode, we have a terrain mode. So basically the difference is high speed versus low speed off-roading. And then you also obviously have a normal mode as well. Now I've got a 360 camera system. So first off backup camera with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel. And you've got tons of different angles out of the truck. And you know, this is still my favorite camera system in a pickup truck. I wish that other automakers would copy what GM has done here. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system, it responds really well. It has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And you've got a little shortcut bar there on the side to make things even easier. And of course, more stuff for the infotainment system. And then this is for your lane departure, parking sensors, auto stop, start, tailgate drop down. With the multi-flex, you do not have a raise function. Hazard lights, stability control, hill descent control. And then we have our rear locking differential. If you wanna lock the front, you also have to have the rear locked with this truck. We've got trailer brake controls integrated from the factory, dual zone climate with heated and ventilated seats. We also have some USB action right next to that. And then you guys can see our shifter for the 10 speed automatic transmission and this kind of like storage area. And then here is the center console. Uh, so you've got a wireless phone charging pad inside, decent storage overall, a little bit on the smaller side when you compare it to like Ram and Ford with their center consoles. And then got the double glove box here, which I love, again, I love this material use and it looks really nice. And by the way, fit and finish in this truck's actually really good. And then we have the rear view camera mirror, as you can see, and then we have a power sliding window. Um, no center for this truck though. Okay, so we've got a base MSRP of 71,500 uh, bucks. And I will say, I do like the fact that most options, or not options, but most equipment rather on the ZR2 is standard. Anyways, the Bison Edition is another $8,000 almost. So basically bumpers, skid plates, and then you've got the rock rail, all that kind of stuff. Um, but anyways, we've got a few other packages. Total MSRP, as you can see, $84,905, which is Raptor money. Let's see how it drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's visibility of the hood, both of the mirrors, throughout the rest of the rear, and let's set off. Well, we are setting off in the ZR2, and I've been living with this for a week, and you know, I kind of miss having a pickup truck after driving this for a week, because there's just so many benefits to a full-size pickup truck, like the space that you have when it comes to storage, the comfort, right? Such a big vehicle with a super long wheelbase, and so it's just so squishy and comfortable, especially with the Multimatic, shocks it's definitely uh more of a luxury experience and again i think that's why more people are going for these full-size pickup trucks because you know it's just like so many vehicles built into one so i gotta adjust the gopro well anyways let's get our acceleration here now the six twos it's it's powerful um i've, I've talked about this i feel like time and time again i feel like the biggest problem with this setup is that the axle ratio is so weak <laughs> that's what i'm gonna call it 3.23 axle ratio and so like you look at most off-roaders ford raptor 410 axle ratio ram t-rex 700 horsepower 3.55 axle ratio right um ram rebel 3.92 axle ratio i'm pretty sure the ford tremor has like a 3.73 axle ratio so the point that i'm trying to make here is like every single off-roader has a more aggressive axle ratio than this i just don't know why Chevy pulled back so much with the, well, I do know why, it's fuel economy, right? But, you know, at the end of the day, this is an $80,000 off-road truck. I think that people would, you know, kind of, especially with a V8, I think they'd rather have a little bit more push off the line than, you know, fuel economy ratings. Um, but with that being said, you know, my mind would change for the uh, diesel because that thing's got so much torque. And with the diesel, right, you'd kind of be more focused on fuel economy and not care as much about the acceleration, at least in my experience um, with that side of things. And so uh, I, I do want to mention a few things here as we are kind of closing off with this review. So first off, when it comes to just the overall style of this truck, I think they did a really good job. Uh, I, I love the interior. I really like Chevy's fit and finish actually. Um, compared to Ford, this fit and finish in here is a lot better. Like everything's a lot tighter. And I just like the feel of the material use uh, in this truck. It just has like a rugged feel, which I think is perfect for an off-roader. Uh, and then, you know, like I said, it's, it's been a great daily driver. Uh, the only thing I can complain about, again, the acceleration, I feel like for a big 6.2 V8, it feels a little bit lackluster, but it's because of the axle ratio, not because of the power. Um, and then the price. I mean, this thing's almost $85,000. That's Raptor money, right? 
And although, like I just said, I feel like this, you know, has a nicer interior than the Raptor, especially fit and finish and all that, it's not as capable as the Raptor off-road. It has smaller tires, right? 33s, this should at least have 35s. And again, I think a reason why this doesn't have 35s is fuel economy. I feel like that's the limiting factor for Chevy on this truck. It's so frustrating. Um, and then, you know, aside from that, the Raptor, right, has the wide body and these shocks are great, but the Raptor has the live valve, which are gonna adjust all the time. So those are just better when it comes to off-roading and on-road use. Okay, so the best way for me to sum things up, I think this is a really good pickup truck, but I do think that Chevy has priced this out of where it should be. Toyota Tundra TRD Pro, which this competes more directly against based on the equipment and all that kind of stuff, is a 70, 000, sorry, there's a fly that keeps flying in my face, a $70,000 pickup truck, right? This is $84,000. I think they've just priced themselves out of the market this truck's supposed to be in. So just my personal opinion, I think it's a great pickup truck, but I think it's a great $70,000 pickup truck, not an $85,000 pickup truck. If they want to charge $85,000 for this, it needs to have a wide body. It needs to have, it could have this engine, but a much more aggressive axle ratio with a sportier transmission. This transmission's smooth. I wouldn't call it sporty. And then obviously bigger tires and again, more of a Raptor style uh, vehicle. Let me know what you guys think about these ZR2. Overall, I think it's a great pickup truck, but I do think that Chevy's kind of price themselves out of the market this is supposed to be in and i mean you look at like dealer lots ram t-rexes are sold out ford raptors are sold out i've seen several zr2s that are available in the bison packages there's not a lot of these but like they don't sell right away and so i think it kind of shows that you know, they may be priced a little bit too high